Hey friends, happy Sunday and welcome back to another week of What's for Dinner. If you're new here, hello and welcome. I am Taylor. Today I've got a week of meals to share with you. Uh, most of this is stuff I've made before, but there is one new really good recipe that I made this week and I cannot wait to share that with you because I think a lot of y'all will love it. So let's go ahead and get into this week's What's for Dinner. Friday night was really simple. We just did orange chicken and fried rice from Trader Joe's. The kids had had an eye doctor appointment earlier in the day. We went to Trader Joe's. Our friends came over. So I knew I just wanted something simple and easy. And I actually shared last week how I made my fried rice. So I will leave that linked down below for you guys. Saturday night is when we tried that new recipe that I was talking about. This is called meatball pot roast. Big hunks of meat can be expensive but ground beef is pretty cheap so when I saw this recipe I knew I wanted to try it. I did make some adjustments to it though but the original recipe will be linked down below. So I'm starting off with two pounds of ground beef in a bowl and to that I'm adding two tablespoons of dried parsley, a tablespoon of garlic powder, some salt and pepper, two cups of breadcrumbs, and about a fourth a cup of half and half mixed with two eggs, a fourth a cup of steak sauce, three tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. And then I'm just gonna get in there with my hands. I took my rings off. I'm just gonna mix it all up really well with my hands. And then once everything is combined really well, I'm going to roll this into meatballs. Um, you could do two to three inch meatballs. I did on the bigger side. So mine were about three inches. And I think I ended up getting like 13 12 or 13 meatballs from this but if you made them smaller you could definitely get more but i just wanted really really big ones Okay, here is where I started to move away from the recipe. I've got my large Dutch oven here and I'm going to be making everything in this one pot. And I'm gonna start off by searing those meatballs. So I heated up a little bit of olive oil and I'm going to sear the meatballs in batches. I had to do two batches cause I didn't wanna like overcrowd the pan. And I just cooked them for like three minutes on one side, flipped them over, did the same thing on the other side, removed those, then did the same thing with the other batch. And then when all the meatballs were seared, I just moved them to the side. And then I'm going to use a paper towel to soak up all of that extra oil and grease that was left in the pan because I did not want that in my pot roast. And then I'm going to add in four cups of beef broth, a six ounce can of tomato paste, and a packet of Lipton onion soup mix. And I'm gonna mix that together really well and just bring that to a simmer and let it simmer for about five minutes. The original recipe didn't even want you to sear the meatballs and it didn't want you to do this in the like big pot. I wanted you to do it in like a separate one, but I found this was easiest and you wouldn't dirty a bunch of dishes and it ended up turning out great. So once I had it simmered for a couple of minutes, then I added in about four large carrots that I peeled and cut into chunks, and then a two pound bag of baby gold potatoes that I cut in half, and then I topped that with my meatballs. And then I put a lid on this and put this in the oven on 375 for 45 minutes. After the 45 minutes this came out, I checked the temperature of my meatballs to make sure they were fully cooked. I checked to make sure that my potatoes and carrots were tender and they were. And so then I added in a fourth a cup of water that I mixed with a tablespoon of cornstarch. I just tried to get that down into the broth so it could kind of thicken it up. And then I put the lid back on this and put it back in the oven for about 15 minutes. 
and here is what that turned out looking like the sauce had thickened up nicely i feel like this would be really good served over rice but i just didn't feel like making it this night plus we had just had rice the night before so i just served it as is and it was filling and really delicious i will definitely be making this again Sunday night was the Super Bowl, so I made some wings, and I actually used the same method that I used about a month ago. I made wings on New Year's Eve, and this is the same oven method that I used before to get them nice and crispy, and to go with them, we just had some Doritos and some fresh veggies and ranch, and I did put buffalo sauce on mine, but the kids just like them plain, and Andy also had buffalo sauce. We had some sweet baby Doritos still left in the fridge, and that was dinner for Sunday. Monday night we had some air fryer chicken thighs and then this cheesy broccoli rice. The chicken thighs are really nothing special. I've shared how I do that many times. It'll be linked down below in a video. Just like 400 degrees with whatever seasonings you want. Flip them halfway through so they get nice and crispy. But the rice, I am making two bags of the Knorr like cheddar broccoli rice, just kind of according to the package directions, adding the milk that it calls for, the butter that it calls for, and the water that it calls for, and bringing that to a boil. And then once it came to a boil, I added in a whole bag of frozen broccoli, put a lid on it, and turn the heat down and let it simmer until the rice was done and that liquid was absorbed. And then I just stirred in some shredded cheddar cheese and that was it. It was delicious. It was filling and, you know, it goes with our chicken well and it's like a complete side. You've got vegetables in there and like carbs and it was really good way to like doctor up some nor rice just add some broccoli and cheese into it and make it a little bit more filling tuesday night we just had some blts i cooked up some bacon in the oven toasted up some sourdough bread from trader joe's and then we had blts elijah doesn't like tomatoes so no tomatoes on there but the kids both like cheese on theirs and lily doesn't like lettuce so she doesn't have lettuce on theirs my kids are opposite. One likes lettuce, one likes tomato. And then I, of course, had everything on mine except for cheese. I am a no cheese on my BLT person. And then we had chips on the side and some fresh veggies as well. Wednesday was Valentine's Day, and typically I'll make like a steak dinner on Valentine's Day, but Andy has been requesting lasagna lately, like many times, and I just had not been in the mood to make it. So I finally decided to make it for Valentine's Day. So I'm starting off with a pound of ground beef here, and I'm going to season it up with some garlic powder, onion salt, Italian seasoning, and a little bit of crushed red pepper flakes, and then just brown that up until it's completely cooked all the way through, and then you can drain off any grease if you have have like excess grease. This meat was pretty lean so I didn't really need to and then I just added a whole jar of marinara sauce to that. Then I know some people use ricotta in their lasagna, but I like to use cottage cheese. So I used a whole container of cottage cheese and then grated in some fresh Parmesan cheese. And then I like to use those same seasonings that I use on my meat in this mixture. So some garlic powder, onion salt, Italian seasoning. I don't do any crushed red pepper in this, but I do use regular black pepper in this and then just mix that all together really well. Then it was time to assemble the lasagna. I take a nine by 13 pan and coat the bottom with some marinara sauce and then start laying in my lasagna noodles. You do not have to cook them beforehand as long as you use enough sauce to cover them really well, then they will just cook in the sauce. So that's what I prefer to do. They don't even have to be the oven ready kind, just any kind of lasagna noodles. As long as you use enough sauce and cook it for long enough, they will turn out great in the oven. So I top those with 
some of that cottage cheese mixture, about half of it, and then some of my meat sauce, and then mozzarella cheese, and just repeat that until everything is used up. And the final layer will just be some noodles with the remaining sauce, and then some mozzarella cheese. And then this went in the oven on 350 for one hour. I like to let it sit for about 10 minutes before serving up. So while that was resting, I cooked up some garlic bread to go with this. And this was our delicious Valentine's Day dinner. And finally, the last meal of the week was this creamy chicken, broccoli, spinach, rice that I have made quite a few times here. It's one of my family's favorite meals. Um, I found it on TikTok originally. I will link the TikTok video down below as well as one of the videos where I have made this before. We absolutely love this, but I will say this night it was not a win because of the broccoli that I used. Um, I used broccoli from Kroger and their bags of broccoli have too many of the stem pieces and not enough florets and it's more expensive than the broccoli at Aldi and the broccoli at Aldi is just florets and it's way better and cheaper. So next time I will not be buying the broccoli at Kroger. Um, I'll have to buy like the name brand and that's like all florets if I have to shop at Kroger but just a heads up. We don't like the stems and broccoli very much and the broccoli at Aldi is way better. But that is going to be it for this week's What's for Dinner. I hope that y'all enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you leave me a thumbs up and be sure to let me know in the comments down below if you plan on trying any of these recipes. I hope y'all have a great rest of your weekend and a great week and I will see y'all in the next one. Bye!